Okay, one topic I did want to get into uh, just before we even begin to talk about anything else besides glasses, apparently. <laughs> um, so basically, when I did the podcast with Sharp the other day, there was like a very brief segment in which I spoke about basically like for some reason I just took it upon myself to just be a little bit open and emotional and talked about the fact that I kind of missed T-Rail and I, I talked about the fact that I didn't really like feel like anything happened between us that would prohibit us having a cool relationship you know I was just kind of like thinking out loud about the fact that you know that when I look at what happened between he and I there was really nothing, you know, there was like nothing significant that occurred between us that would preclude that kind of relationship. And for some reason, his response to this was to basically go on his stream and do like a half hour, kind of like weird quasi attack on me where he basically made it made it clear that he wasn't cool with me for whatever reason, or he had this sort of resentment against me. And, uh, you know, I felt like I had like a general idea of what was going to be in it just from seeing, you know, a couple of captions of the the clips from the Reddit or whatever. But I, I, I sat down yesterday and I watched the full 30 minute clip, which keep in mind, the thumbnail has bullet holes in my face. So that's the kind of aggression that we're talking about here. And I actually opened up the notepad on my phone because I wanted to make sure that my response was coherent and that I was able to kind of catalog whatever uh, issues you might have had with me. And I didn't write anything down because in the full 30 minute clip, he didn't even come close to answering the question of like what happened between he and I that caused tension. The only thing that he talks about basically in the clip in terms of things between us was the money side of things. Now, I've made, I've made this pretty clear in terms of how I approach paying people or, or you know, having people uh, get paid through No Jumper, which is that you know, if you wanna get a raise, generally speaking, you're probably gonna have to talk to like Josh or I about that. Like we're not really just like chasing people down to be like, hey, we wanna give you more money. That's not really, <laughs> it's not really how it works. You know, in general, uh, and, any and corporation work. anyone who's ever had a job <laughs> knows that generally speaking, maybe if you get a new title, that you, there will be a raise associated with that, you know? But for the most part, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Now, t is somebody that I consider generally pretty smart, but the fact that he doesn't seem to really have anything of substance to say about what apparently I did to him, the desire for like a victimhood narrative is so strong that, you know, you could have someone like him listen to me say some kind things I thought for a couple of minutes on a podcast and that his response would be and this says a lot about the incentives of making YouTube content and just how people know that if they are to say something critical or at least title it in such a way that it looks critical that there's going to be a ton of people tuning in and that that's very much what the audience wants to see but you know I guess that that was kind of a, a little bit of a learning experience for me is like oh I was kind of transparent and emotionally available for two minutes on the podcast, and instead I just get this dude making a half-hour video with bullet holes at the thumbnail talking about money. Because I dropped a comment pretty soon after it came out and I, on the YouTube video, and I think I said, it's hilarious to quit before asking for a raise <laughs> or something like that. And he responded basically saying, it wasn't about money. I, uh, I would have worked for free yada yada well okay if it's not about money then what is it about because that video didn't answer that question at all t uh, rel and i always had a cool relationship when his fucking store flooded you know who was the first people to donate money it was me and lena besides taiga i don't even know who else donated i'm pretty sure the store still isn't open you know it's like i may not have been as in his face as he would have expected or he would have liked or whatever but the truth is is that I put T-Rail on in a lot of ways. I don't even want to say me. No jumper put him on, put him in a position to win. Now, you, you might be able to say, like, look, AD brought him to the platform, whatever, for sure. But I shared the platform with him and allowed him to basically build something that now he has as, like, a real opportunity to take care of his family and make money and everything. And uh, still, after watching that clip, I just I don't feel like I have an answer on the question of why things went sour or why things are like that. Because if you actually watch, uh, <laughs> some fan <laughs> took it upon himself to basically like 
put T Rail's explanations for leaving side by side, like when it first happened and then the other day. And they're so fundamentally different because at first he wasn't really playing into this victim narrative as hard. Whereas now he's like really leaning into it, even though he's not telling you what happened between us because nothing happened uh, that would cause him to leave. The reality is, is he left because he has this sense of loyalty to the pers- the people who brought him to the platform, which I respect that. That's cool. But you don't have to lie and act like there was some shit that happened between us or you were so disrespected. And also, this is another thing is like, why have I sat back for all of this time and just allowed everybody to lie about how much they were getting paid? That's one thing I've been thinking about is like, why did I just allow everybody to sort of run with these crazy narratives? I just want to make one thing clear. I have never had anyone in terms of on-air talent getting paid six figures a year and i see this constantly like as if this is like a real thing i'm not i'm not putting out names or anything and i'm not saying that i haven't paid people the the equivalent of six figures a year because there have been people on this platform that i've had sort of more like profit sharing uh arrangements with and those people are going viral obviously i'm talking about sharp sharps made you know somewhat outlandish amounts of money at times on this channel but it's like there's there's people on one side of the fence who are exaggerating how much they're getting paid in order to look good, I guess, on camera. And I, I, you know, I don't even have an issue with that because this is hip hop or whatever. Fake it till you make it or not, not fake it, but like, you know, act like you're doing better than you really are. That's totally fine. Normally, I would think, I, you know, I just kind of accepted that. But the reality is, is that there's been a lot of people sort of making it sound like they got paid a lot more than they did. And then you also have somebody like T-Rell who's making it sound like he got paid a lot less than he did. Let's do some numbers. He said that he was going to pay $300 per piece of content. Now, you remember at one time he was doing the Wednesday show. He was doing like the news a couple times. And he was doing a couple of interviews per week, right? So if you take that and you take five times 300, you have $1,500 a week plus the fact that he was getting cut in on the brand deal or the uh, the advertisements that were on at the end of the day, which for us, we've always kind of given a very significant percentage of the ad reads to the hosts who are, you know, administrating it or whatever. I mean, I could maybe ask Josh if we really wanted to get down to it, but the reality is, is that it was, you know, T Rail was like very easily earning like, you know, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, et cetera per month as a result of doing content. Now, granted, he was doing a, a good amount of content. doing like five pieces of content per week is pretty significant. But, you know, that's without having to ask for a raise. That's without ever trying to have a conversation with us. So, you know, I felt like that was actually pretty appropriate given the fact that on a lot of the content that was being made in these situations, it's like we are not exactly raking in cash. And they know that because when you do a podcast live stream on No Jumper, and for some reason, everybody wants to, to paint this as if this is like mean for me to say, or this is unappreciative of, for me to say. But the reality is, is that all these guys who left, they all are completely familiar with how much you get paid from live streaming. And I, you know, I've had that conversation with different people. There were some people on one of these guys' podcasts who had to leave, and those guys left because they were asking for money. And the reality was is that you just don't make that much money from doing live stream podcast type content on YouTube. And that's okay because for many years prior to right now, I was essentially taking a loss by supporting a whole bunch of different hosts on the channel because of the fact that I believed in it long term. And so I don't know, like when I think about the fans at home or I think about the average person in media, if you were to get offered, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, something like that, maybe up to like a hundred thousand dollars, realistically, especially and without even having to ask for a raise, if I were to offer that to somebody, I feel like every person watching this, as well as like the you know ninety percent of people working in media, would hear that number and be like, oh, I could get paid that much to be in the office like two days a week for like five or six hours per day. I don't really think that that's that offensive. But then when you come down to like, oh, $300 per appearance, that sounds bad. So that's what everybody say. Nobody's talking about the fact that this was like a person who was doing a lot of content on the channel at a certain point. Yes. And, and, and the thing about that is that it's like, this is kind of the overall thing that I was getting sick of towards the end of 
a lot of what was going on is the fact that people were so comfortable putting these bullshit narratives out there, in particular ones that made me look bad. And meanwhile, I'm just sitting back and just looking at it and seeing everybody. The reality is, is everybody's like, why didn't you put T-Rail on a contract? And keep in mind, I was letting him do whatever he wanted outside of No Jumper. I wasn't trying to have any kind of control over the fact that he was streaming on his own or whatever. A non-exclusive deal where you're getting paid that significant of an amount of money where you then get to go home and talk about whatever the fuck you talked about on No Jumper on your own shit, I'm not really buying the idea that this was not generous. Because I've already painted the picture about the fact that I was essentially taking a loss on a lot of the content. Uh, People choose to hear that and just read into it and be like, oh, that's offensive. That's mean. You didn't appreciate them. No, I'm being honest with you. And you know the fucking numbers because they're transparent. You guys are making the same amount. That, that, what I'm talking about, that seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000, whatever it might have ended up being based on how much shit he was doing, they left, or t Rell specifically, he left that to go do their own podcast, split four ways. So, you know, if I had to guess, I would say that, you know, an average episode makes 400, 500 bucks, 600 bucks. Maybe you're, you kill it that month or that week and you make a thousand bucks. So, you, you know, I'm not trying to say that, like, them doing their own independent thing is a bad idea or whatever because if they wanted to do that i support them but you are talking about swapping out maybe making a hundred thousand dollars a year for maybe making like 200 bucks a week because now you're actually earning the amount that that content earns and splitting it up evenly whereas before you had this fucking white guy benefactor who was just artificially amplifying the price for that kind of content because we enjoyed having it on the con on the channel and you know we were trying to make it work and you know t-rell is someone who if he had came to me and said hey i want to get on a contract and i want to get paid x amount of dollars i would have been a hundred percent open to that conversation even right before he left the platform i remember we were having a conversation on his channel where he was talking about lush and he said he kind of said something about how he felt like he should have been getting paid more and you like go listen to how I responded to it. I was 100% open to it because I realized that he was a valuable part of the operation. And I felt like, you know, if he wanted to have that, contra- uh, that conversation, if he wanted to get on a consistent contract, he would just ask me. And it's crazy because the other day, I don't even know that much about these guys, but I know that like Mac- MacWap is like one of their friends or whatever. And I just seen a clip of them talking about it. And they totally agreed with me. They were like, yeah, like if you wanted to get paid more, you should have asked them. And I'm like, why am I why am I watching your friends who don't even know me or I'm pretty sure they talk shit about me or whatever? I don't I don't I don't pay that much attention, but why am I watching them totally get it while I'm watching a 30 minute clip that you made with bullet holes in the thumbnail of you just like intentionally pretending like you made a good move like like as if it was it was a really brilliant genius business move to quit before you saw how much money you could potentially get paid you know uh i don't know i just feel kind of baffled by that whole thing um maybe he just felt like his uh that opportunity wasn't there for him you know because I mean? like because he was there for, <clears throat> he's been here for like over a year before he ended up like leaving and he's done so much shit like you were saying maybe in his mind he was just like oh I'm not being taken seriously. Why wouldn't he ask? Mm. Huh? Sorry, I'm just throwing my car kid. Can we <laughs> insert with this little break and just say that he said several times that he was doing it for the views. If you want to come at him, let's get the views up. Did, yeah. We, can we agree that some of the content was, was fabricated <laughs> because the views had to be at what they... I mean, it has to be about the views at a certain point, right? Because you have a 30-minute video in which the the... The stated intent in the title is that it's going to be some sort of like bombshell accusation thing against me or like him explaining what he has against me or whatever. And then you actually watch it and there's really nothing. There's no substance to it. And so that makes me actually kind of wonder, like, do you have confidence that you can get a viral clip from talking about anything besides me? Because it kind of feels like that's where this is going, is that t Rail is just so aware of the fact that his clips don't go viral unless he talks about me, that even me talking about him in a very 
you know, kind way, in my opinion, on the Sharp interview where I did not say anything negative about him at all and really just kind of ruminated for a few minutes about the fact that I sort of regret the fact that we don't have a relationship anymore. And that that that, that was enough. To your employees, you never spoke right. bad to about them to us either. Let's put that on camera too. Nobody dirty mac the situation and yeah. said, "Oh, this dude is that 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 and that." Right. It's always been good things, and like you said, and awesome. I haven't said anything bad about them on this channel, period. And even right now, I'm not exactly like dissing him. Yeah, I'm just speaking on but my he said fair that he was opinion. Grateful, and then he does, he contradicts himself and says that he's grateful for the opportunity. Also, right. Okay, I'll go back to what you were saying. I just was. It's just, I didn't want to speak on it in the moment of like when it was happening and everything because I'll be honest, my feelings were pretty hurt, which apparently, like I got him and Heather and they're roasting me for acknowledging that I have feelings. And then in the same breath, basically saying that I'm this heartless monster that only cares about business or whatever, you know? And it's like, how, how do those two things exist at the same time? How are you saying that you're a boss? but you never thought to have a conversation about your pay because he don't even have to look far to see examples of how to move because AD wasn't shy about asking for money. And AD, he can't run with this kind of narrative because he fucking went on his stream a million times, went on other po podcasts, whatever, and said, I'm getting paid well from No Jumper because he asked, because he tried to get paid as much as he, as he could. And even there were times where we had conversations about money and we were like, listen, we can't pay you that much. Or we, we have to do some different things. Or you have to get paid from We Hungry Like This. We'll give you a percentage of the income versus just a flat fee, et cetera, et cetera. We worked it out because you know, it, it behooves us to do so. And uh, I don't know, it's, just, it, it's really kind of shocking how compelling the victimhood narrative is for people that even when, I'm a person who put him in a position to make a lot of money and to build a fan base and to build up his own platform at the same time, but somehow he's still a victim in this situation. Like He views himself as somebody who had something really bad done to them, even though he's not able to identify what that thing is. And so, I don't know, I, I think that might be the majority of what I wanted to say. But it's like I, I see so many people in the comments and everything who are starting to realize that there's just no legs to this argument, to this idea that Adam treated these guys badly. 